Death Valley National Park, one of the most spectacular parks in our national park system, sitting in Eastern California, fairly close to the border with Nevada. Uh, a lot of people think about Death Valley National Park, it doesn't sound that exciting, it sounds like a bad place to go, but if you come here when the temperatures are right, which is typically in the winter and spring, uh, it's a really spectacular landscape, really unique and one of a kind. Uh, and the view up here from Dante's view on the east side of the range here is one of the more spectacular places to, to see some of these geologic features. You can see here that Death Valley uh, forms this big wide valley bounded by the Panamint Range to the west and the Black Mountains which I'm standing on here to the east. Death Valley formed uh, during the last 10 or so million years during basin and range extension. Basically everything from the Sierra Nevadas of California across Nevada into the Wasatch Mountains of of central Utah, this whole area has been stretched in an east-west direction, causing mountains to rise, valleys to drop, and the thin crust to get much, much thinner. That, of course, triggered um, volcanic eruptions in the area as well. So a really dynamic landscape, and the process is still continuing today. We still have earthquakes that occur in this region periodically. It's still considered very much a ge geologically active region. So this basin and range uh, extension is what's created this fantastic landscape you see before you here. Now Death Valley sits below sea level. The lowest point is 282 feet below sea level. And what we have here then is as the crust is uh, extended, pushing the mountains up and dropping the valley down, we have a valley floor that's very flat, forming a, a dry lake bed called a playa. Now during the last ice age, this was actually filled with a large freshwater lake up to 600 feet deep. So the climate was much wetter then, and we actually had a large lake here called Lake Manly, one of several lakes that existed in the Pleistocene in Western North America. The climate, of course, shifted and changed at the end of the Ice Ages about 10,000 years ago and became much more arid um, and dry. And so things started to dry up quite a bit here. And what we have now is this big salt pan, this big uh, dry lake bed where once existed a big freshwater lake. So the white you see down there is mostly salt deposits mixed with mud. Um, that form when the, the water comes down these big canyons and occasionally water floods this area with an inch or two and those minerals that have been carried by the water evaporate, the water evaporates and the minerals precipitate out salts uh, in the valley floor. What we can see from this vantage point is, is a couple of fantastic things. Uh, one is at the leading edge of this uh, valley down here looking to the west we can see some of these broad uh, alluvial fans. There's one down here. This is right above bad water and you can see the road kind of skirting around the edge of that alluvial fan. This is uh, one of many narrow uh, steep canyons that come out of these mountains and when they have large flash floods here those flash flood debris, the sediments and boulders that are carried uh, are deposited on the valley floor in sort of this uh, apron of fan shaped material. There's another one over here uh, just to the south. Eventually, now the ones on this side of the, the valley tend to be kind of small. Uh, if you can kind of look through the haze over there to the Panamint Mountains, you'll see a much broader uh, and uh, massive alluvial fan front. They're actually merging together to form what's called a bajada. And those alluvial fans are much larger because they drain a much larger area, bigger mountains and a bigger drainage area, so they can carry more sediment and more water and create larger deposits out on that side of the the valley front. Uh, if we look to the north there, off in the distance, some of the, the tan material you see down in the valley, those are actually sand dunes. So we do get sand dune deposits here uh, in Death Valley. I think there's six or seven different discrete sand dunes as we look off to the north. Um, the rocks here in Death Valley are pretty remarkable. There's a, a wide variety of rocks here, uh, but most notably we have uh, these very old 1.8 billion year old what we call basement rocks these metamorphic rocks that have actually been brought up There's been so much extension and the faulting has pushed up these deep level rocks up to the surface where they're exposed here in Death Valley So pretty fantastic landscape uh, one you should come and explore. There's little narrow canyons. There's scenic vistas colorful rocks uh, really unique landscapes that you wouldn't see in a lot of other places here in Death Valley 
One other thing about Death Valley in terms of its climate is it's one of the driest places on earth and that's because it sits in sort of this, this uh, rain shadow. The Sierras are to the west and then there's a couple of other mountain ranges between Death Valley and the Sierras. So as Pacific storms move to the east, they dump all their snowfall in those mountains. And by the time they reach Death Valley, they're depleted in moisture. So very little uh, rainfall occur falls here in Death Valley. Typically they get thunderstorms in late summer um, in early fall, which produces some of the flash floods and some of the more dynamic processes we see here. Uh, so a dry place, one of the driest places on earth, uh, one of the lowest places on earth and really a spectacular landscape. Death Valley National Park in Eastern California.